Beginner's Business Bloopers. Welcome back. This is Beginner's Business Bloopers. You know, a lot of people talk about a lot of things, but they talk about nothing. You have certain type of entrepreneurs, wealthy people, um, famous people, rich people, and there's different levels to this. And they all have a different mindset on how to grow. There are some will be discouraging and they will be rich. And then there's some to be wealthy and they will be honest. And then there's those that will be wealthy and that will not be honest. Because you got to understand, being an entrepreneur, there's people that may feel that you are a threat because your threatness is your greatness because they don't know what creative mind or what comes out of your mind, what may happen that you will flourish and rise above the occasion. But those, regardless of whatever level of money that they may have, whether they mediocre, whether they wealthy, whether they rich, whether they're poor, the mindset impacts certain people and everyone doesn't think alike. And so as many people that's in this world, you have to keep in mind if you want to be an honest entrepreneur, an entrepreneur doesn't have anything to do with how much money you got in your bank. Is how you can really physically control and manage and make it become flourish to your best ability. Not to what society think it should be. So you have to understand that there, is, are, there are billions of people in this world. And even though that your business may be sitting in a little bitty town... Or a large major city or a medium city it doesn't, or a town, country, doesn't make a difference. You got to understand that it's so many people in this world that you cannot focus on another person's business. Because your customers do not have to revolve around the other business customers. I don't care if it's the same like business. It can be a hundred of the same like business. It is so much money out here. And people travel all over the world. Different states, countries, cities, towns. Consistently for you to worry about who is coming to another person's business or they're still in another client. Another thing that I have heard, and everyone has their own opinion about everything. There is some business owners that are discouraging and they'll say, you shouldn't be speaking on anything if your bank account or your credit is not right. But everybody started somewhere. Those are tactics to discourage, but encourage at the same time. Because you have to understand, there's different mindsets. Everyone brain cell does not operate the same. Some people can function with reckless credit, low bank accounts, and rise to occasion to be billionaires. And then there's those that really want some business. And they're waiting to hear this entrepreneur or this Wealthy person tell them, go get it. And they get into their little functions and they'll say, get your credit together. Get your um, business together. Do this and do that. You need to do this. Everyone had to start somewhere. They didn't just poop and everything. They had people that supported them. But sometimes they forget how their humble beginnings came. And then some have it on a silver platter. And so they will never understand for, from those that had to get it hard. They only know it from their perspective. So don't be discouraged. 
Keep pushing forward, even if you don't have certain things. Build on as it comes. Then there's wealthy people who will be honest and tell you. They fake it till they make it. Then eventually, the more people hear about you, it comes. And remember, the ones that will support you will be the ones you don't even know. <laughs> don't depend on your neighborhood. Don't depend on your family. Don't depend on your spouses. Don't depend on your significant others. Don't depend on your best friends or your buddies, your coworkers. Because they will be the main ones that disappoint you when you're trying to rise in the occasion. But that should give you more strength to fight for what you want in your entrepreneurship. And no business perfect. Every business sometimes have a dipping part where they struggle. They may not talk about it. But it's how you rise to occasion, how you decide to build from it, how you decide to recoup from it. There are so many avenues out here to incorporate in your up and rising business and until it flourish. I'm going to say this once. Your finances doesn't have anything to do with your credit. You making, what I mean is, you making money doesn't have anything to do with you making credit. So there will be people tell you to get your credit in order. And I beg the difference. Earn your money and build your credit at the same time. Don't stop your entrepreneurship because your credit is not here. Them customers are not worried about your credit. They're worried about the product. And that's one of the tactics that I've noticed a lot of big entrepreneurs try to put in your ear. You got to understand when it's a shortcoming for you. If it's their business to make money, they give great tools. It's their business to make money. But so, is their business to learn about your business so they can incorporate your knowledge into their business while you're sitting up here building your credit? If you have the means to do the bare minimum basics to establish your business and put your product out there, put your product out there. But protect yourself while you're doing it the same cost. I'm going to say, establish your business. Get your product out there. Work on your critic at the same time. There's no law saying that you can't have a business without with bad credit. The issue is it just eliminates you from as getting some of the things that other businesses have. You can establish your business and build your credit at the same time. And I'm not just talking about your personal credit. I'm talking about your business credit or your personal credit, whichever one you want to tag. But going in, depending on the level of entrepreneurship that you want to go, because everyone wants to go on different levels. Everybody don't want to be a millionaire. Some people just want enough to get by. And I think a lot of times entrepreneurs forget this, that everyone is on a different mindset and a goal in their life. Some just want to get off the nine to five job and just make just what they was earning a little bit over just to have the ability to not have to answer to anyone. And then you have those that I'm just doing enough just to get by. Then you have those that I'm in business, but I have not put my product out. Then you have those that I'm in business, but I'm being suppressed by other entrepreneurs. The mindset is where you're going to have to change. Those entrepreneurs don't stop your business. Your mindset and your action stops the business. Being creative, figuring out ideas to not think that you're competing with the other, but you're trying to gain access to customers. What the other business have going doesn't have anything to do with what you have going. Even if you're in a role of the same like business, you have to be creative enough to bring in the clientele. 
Everybody does business cards. You know, you're going to have to be more creative. And maybe sometimes is how you doing it, your business is the reason why you're not bringing in the clientele that you choose. You're not going to make every customer happy, but you need to find that niche of customers that can tolerate your personality. The reality is customer service is the main source to all entrepreneurship. I don't care who it is. That's why some business owners don't even show their face because they know that their personality is horrible. It is that people can't stand the grounds that they walk in because of arrogance. But they're great business minds. They can produce income like flow. So they won't be the picture of the business. Sometimes you have to be woman and man enough to step down. And if you know there's someone that has a good fit for your picture, they not, it's not giving them the say they the business owner. But if they will don't mind being that model or that picture of your business to help it flourish, that's what you're going to have to do. Sometimes your pride is what holds your business up. It's, it's, it's not, you have to understand that just because you go into business don't mean people have to buy your products. You, they might not like your products because you're toning your voice and your arrogance because you feel like your business is stuff and your product is that. You're attacking other people's companies instead of worrying about your own product, your own model, everything that it's about that you created. Some people get caught up worrying about that other business. Do believe me, it doesn't have anything to do with it. You can be in the slums of the worst neighborhood and still rise to the occasion. Or you can be in the wealthy and still not flourish. You can be in the wealthy and flourish. So it really has a lot to do with your customer service. It has a lot to do with your personality. It got to do you being a professional business owner and understanding when that you need to step down and let someone be the forefront of your business. It's not saying give up your business. It's saying that, hey, I need to find a model in image that people don't mind dealing with. That's real talk. But I'm going to switch to oath. Investing in yourself. There's nothing wrong with going to these seminars and learning, but you have to understand. You can go to every seminar, go to the retreats, and learn a wealth of information. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be about you pushing your own product. There's nothing wrong with you learning about how to be the best boss you can be. But understand that don't go broke investing in those entrepreneurial workshops when you don't even have the products to put out there on the table. You have to have a cut a cutting point because they're there to sell money and make money too. They giving a wealth of information, but you're gonna have to use your common sense to know that hey, even when they're selling you a golden ticket, you gotta know, hey, I'm giving them this seventeen hundred, but I haven't even bought my I hadn't even bought my ownership of my own name. I don't own my trademark. I don't own my copyright. But you're sitting in these workshops knowing what you need to do and still haven't done it. There will be people that even in big places will take your ideas, listen to your ideas, and turn around and flip your ideas before you even go in business. Because you did not know that was the game. Because you don't know to protect yourself at all costs. You can go to an entrepreneur business and not give your game. A perfect example. Business owner is a, a business dealing with the tattoo industry. The young man said how he can make and a thousand. Really, he can t- make it in a, within less than five minutes. But it's got to do with his will to continue to go on. And so he displayed what he does. The workshop he was in, what the persons did is they promoted another person's that they knew personally as the artist. 
But see, that young man put his, invested his money in to come to the workshop to learn to to do. It didn't stop what he's doing. But you got to think about when you're going out here talking about what you want to do. You need to close your mouth and listen and not give game. Because they're just like they're speaking. They're giving game, but they learning to to learn how to become better entrepreneurs their step, even though they're they may be millionaires, billionaires, <coughs> excuse me. But the bottom line is they're g- gathering detailed information, data from you. You can send a message to Oprah Winfrey. This is just an example because it has happened. And I just said, sent an email saying, I really want to do DNA on my family because it's very complex. Whoever handled, my, handled it, what they did a couple of months later, they did a show on DNA. But that's my burden proof because I, you know, my thing is I didn't protect myself. I gave an idea and they made it come true. It wasn't a game for me. It was a game for their company. This happens a lot when you're giving information to business people. And I sent that email to AOL, through AOL years ago. Years ago. But as soon as that gentleman came on her show, and I was just so disgusted because I just reached out to them and asked them, could they find my family? Because our family is hidden in Congress. It's one of... Uh, Genocide people. And I said, Oprah Winfrey show? Really? I said, this is, it is, it wasn't a coincidence because I know that I sent that email to that asking them to help. But instead what they did is did wealthy people. Did DNA. Took my idea and did it. It happens all the time. So learning to close your mouth and listen to what they have to say. And just because they ask you to stand up and tell you this does not mean that you give detail about what your ideas, what your dreams, what your plans is. Because as soon as you open your mouth and tell them something, they're going to manifest your greatness into their life and their existence. These are just key notes to think about. If you really think about everything that is done in dealing with business, but at the end of the day, no matter what they do, it does not stop who you are because even though that those people done what they done, it doesn't stop what you've done because it's still billions of people in the world. You just got to come up with a plan to overshadow what they done or what they exposed or used of yours that you did not protect. Even when it comes to family and friends, we got we so nifty about giving our ideas of, of what we're going to do what kind of business we're going in before we even even put it on paper, before we even protect it. Stop doing that. Whatever business you're going into, whatever business you're going into, keep it a secret to yourself until you establish and protect it. And going in business, I want to give you the tea. There will be people that come to your business when you have, you're doing well and you have fives or high fours. You have people reaching out to you. And what they do is tend to ride the wave of your business. But what the public thinks is that your business is thriving off of those that are supporting you. I'm going to say that again. What the society will think is that those that's riding your back that supporting you is the reason your business is thriving. But nine times out of ten, they're just riding away because they see that it is a good product and they want to ride behind the team. It never displays that this business was already established before they set their foot and said they wanted to be a ambassador, spokesperson, or whatever they want to call themselves. A lot of times it helps boost their career more than it does the business. But it's a good... It is a good addition to your portfolio of your business to acknowledge those that say that they're supporting your team. 
there's people that say that they support your team. They will place you on their social media following, establishing that they support your business, which is a great thing. A lot of times there's um, free services given that you will give or free products just to get your name out there a little bit more. Sometimes they can get it out there more. Sometimes it may elevate the other person's career. So don't get it confused just because they're famous that they're elevating your business because that's not always too, true. Another thing is, just because you see social media posts and pictures does not mean that a person is financially together. No matter how many famous people they're around, no matter who it is, public figures, local figures, it does not mean that the business is financially there. Some are and some not. They're trying to maintain the eye of the rhythm or trying to maintain their trend of being relevant. And being relevant is being connected to someone that is actively on social media platforms. And just because you attach yourself to someone famous does not mean that everyone is going to jump on the bandwagon. They are jumping on the bandwagon for the famous person and they may not be jumping on the bandwagon for the business. You can be the top business in your city, but the person that's mentoring you or that's... Um, a brand ambassador that uh, wants to rep your product because they like your product. Sometimes it's a ripple effect of a backfire where the business does not get the attention that it's supposed to because the person is really focusing on their career more than your business. So it's up to you to promote and get your business out there with those signature famous people, local celebrities, and your city, town, or state. That's real facts. It's a help to, to your portfolio, but you have to be consistent in keeping the customer and client coming. The same energy you had starting up your business, getting those clientele, is going to be the same energy you need to keep them. And you got to understand there's different levels of clients. You got to understand what type of client that you want to deal with on day to day. What products that you target has a lot to do with finances, what clientele come in your shop and what you have to deal with. There's so many personalities. Some will click with you and some will not. And if you're not clicking with a, a client, you need to let your other partner or your other Co your uh, employee stand in representing you. Get your pride out of it and let people that can work with people with unique personalities so your business can thrive. Never let anger get in the way where with your business. Separate anger when it comes to your business. No matter how angry or disrespectful a client is, Learn to separate that at the at the end of the day, your business is your business. And you have a right to accept certain clients and not accept clients. And a lot of times those clients uh, come back after they had their temper tantrums and realize that they were the problem. But not all of them. Because you do have your pride, pride, prideful clients. So what you're going to do is wash your personalities, your anger, down the sink, wash your hands, and don't let it get too involved. Take some cold water, wash your hands, and let that, that unnecessary energy flush down the sink. Because it's unnecessary luggage that you have to deal with where you can control your behavior and realize that the business is at stake. And that is nothing wrong with stepping aside and letting another employee to take charge 
when a client's personality is very disrespectful. That's just real tea. Every customer is not going to be for you. Even the kindest, nicest person with a respectable will be targeted by demonic personalities. And sometimes even those with, that are and quiet, quiet have to step away and let someone else they can handle that personality. 